uh, one of those uh, lawyers who was involved in this uh, suit. His name is Waikua Wanyoike. He's from the Katiba Institute. Uh, thank you so much for joining us on News Centre this morning. Um, so just first of all, your reaction to, to this ruling yesterday? Uh, good morning, uh, Yvonne, and thanks for having me. Um, just uh, one uh, important thing. This case was filed by uh, a crew, as you have said, the Center for Rights, Education, Awareness, and Crown Trust, uh, and specifically uh, by Ms. Wangeshi of Crew and Ms. Daisy Amdani of Crown Trust. But the first petitioner was a citizen uh, who was not affiliated to any organization, and I think it's important to state that. Uh, so actually the name of the case is Marilyn uh, Muthoni Kamuru. Uh, and as you have rightly stated, uh, yesterday uh, Justice Onguto found that the president uh, flouted uh, the constitution uh, by constituting a cabinet that did not meet the two-third gender rule. He also found that uh, the National Assembly, by approving a list uh, of nominees from the president for positions of cabinet, um, it also violated the constitution because it was very clear from that list that the cabinet uh, would not meet the gender rule. And we are talking about the composition that happened in December 2015. All right. So, um, Waikwa, what then does this ruling mean? Kenyans are watching this and saying, all right, it's all well and good that the judge said that uh, the president and parliament uh, flouted the two-thirds gender rule. So what does this mean and what next? It, it means a number of things. First, it, uh, it's a very critical decision uh, in, in the sense that it's dismantled a long-held uh, uh, myth that uh, the gender principle has to be implemented progressively. What Justice Onguto says is that no, uh, under Article 27, 8 of the Constitution, which is the equality provision in the, in the Constitution and the one that specifically requires two-third composition, uh, there is no future, there is no progressiveness. And in fact, specifically says uh, the women uh, of this country have waited for too long. Six years after the Constitution was promulgated is too long to be told to keep waiting. Um, so that's the first thing. So that the argument on progressive uh, implementation for the gender principle cannot uh, any longer hold. Uh, secondly, it actually means that if the president, for whatever reason between now and August next year, uh, has to reconstitute cabinet, either because some of his cabinet secretaries who might be going for elective position or for, for whatever reason, he cannot constitute uh, a cabinet that does not meet to that. And that is a critical con uh, clarification because the eight months is assuming that there will not be any uh, a reconstitution of cabinet and that the next reconstitution uh, will happen after the general election. But just in case uh, there is a need to reconstitute for whatever reason, the president has to follow the to that gender principle. But more critically, uh, Yvonne, um, is that this uh, judgment will uh, have significant impact in terms of how we constitute public uh, bodies, whether it's school boards, for example. Uh, if, uh, for example, we find that school boards do not meet uh, to that uh, gender principle, and especially public school boards, that's a course of action, and schools, school boards are supposed to constitute uh, themselves um, uh, in line with the constitution, the two that. So, I, I, and, and I use the school board example just to show the reach that this judgment will have. So okay, it goes so to all spheres, whether it's parastatos and all that. Uh -huh. So it's a good time for the state to actually audit uh, membership of various state organs and see whether they are compliant all right, before so we go uh, after the individual uh, organs. Okay, so uh, what you're saying is um, it sets a precedent for other organizations that are looking at constituting uh, their membership. Uh, but then some would say that this ruling then means that the next time the president uh, chooses to reconstitute his cabinet, but as it stands now, it is not legally constituted in line with the two-thirds gender rule. Yvonne, I'm losing you. Can you hear me? 
All right. Waikwe, can you hear me now? Uh, I'm just having a problem hearing you. Okay. All right. Um, maybe we can fix that, uh, your earpiece, so you can hear me better. And then uh, we will come back and talk to you about that because there's an important question about what happens with the cabinet now as it is uh, illegally constituted, as the judge ruled. Uh, we'll be back with Waikwa Wanyoike, who's from the Katiba Institute. And we're talking about that ruling that came out of the High Court yesterday saying that the cabinet is not constituted according to the two-thirds gender rule as espoused in Kenya's constitution. 